Hi again everybody, this is another mantra in the series of My Favourite Mantra. So the third one we're doing is about the transience of pain and suffering and also the high lights or the high points in our life. This is called the Matras Parshas Shloka from the Bhagavad Gita, which uh, some of you might be familiar with. It's a classic and it is a beautiful one about the highs and the lows, happiness and distress coming and going like the seasons of winter and summer. But it's also the implication that we shouldn't be surprised when things go downhill or when things are fantastic one minute and then awful the next. So this is part of life and I love it. It's Chapter 2, verse 14. If you have a copy of your Bhagavad Gita, look it up, read it, recite it. Remember too, guys, that the really important thing about Sanskrit is that even if you do not understand the Sanskrit itself, it has this amazing ability to, uh, with the resonance and the frequency of the sound of your mantra, uh, to have a, a potent and a healing quality. So don't forget that. Even if you're not quite sure what the words mean in Sanskrit, it can still be very, very powerful when you chant. Let's go through the chant and then I'll give you the translation and we'll talk a little about how we might refer to this shloka uh, in your own practice. So, big breath. Matras parshas tu kanteya Shi toshna sukhatu kadaha Agama payeno nityas Tam sitik shasva parata So nice shloka in the middle of chapter 2. This is chapter 2 of the Bhagavad Gita. And the translation is this. So it's uh, addressing uh, Arjuna. O son of Kunti, the non-permanence of happiness and distress, the disappearance in due course, are like the appearance and disappearance of winter and summer seasons. They arise from sense perception and one must learn to tolerate them without being disturbed. So by that we mean that take it in stride, remain calm and, and just accept that things are going to be hot, cold, high, low, the black, the white, the uh, contrast of the yin and the yang, if you like, of life, the extremes. We have to get used to experiencing both and everything in between. So it's really about cultivating an awareness of the transient nature of emotions, good emotions and um, bad ones, and recognizing that both pleasure and pain is part of life. So it comes and it goes. It will be temporary, it will pass. And uh, the sooner we understand this with a certain equanimity, a balance, not going in all drama, uh, drama queen or drama king, on ourselves when things go bad or when things are extreme. So can we, the challenge here is how do we, we keep this nice sense of equanimity, a sense of understanding that things are, are like this, up and down, up and down. So can we, can we incorporate that into our daily practice of mindfulness? So one little example, uh, I've used the example of my mother. I've used the example of the fact that perhaps some of you know, last year she had a stroke. And I uh, overreacted perhaps to the news that she had a stroke because her communication skills were affected. She was a chatty Cathy. She is a chatty Cathy. She loves talking to people. She loves making f new friends. She will talk. She's one of those people who talks to people in shops that she meets and she talks to strangers all the time. So <laughs> she's one of these people who will miss not being able to find her language and find her words to be able to chat to people she knows and people she is uh, meeting in uh, in real time. So I was, uh, I, as I said, I reacted uh, in, a, in a very extreme way. I was a, a very upset on her behalf. But in the whole scheme of things, we understand she's had a great innings. She's 91. She had a, a really fun, very rich life of a being an academic in her professional life. And she helped a lot of people. So she, I would absolutely say that she went through life 
really living it to the full. Lots of very good friends, even to this day. And traveling a lot, teaching abroad, having experiences all over the world. And when I look at it all in context, I then realize, wow, we come back to the gratitude practice. We come back to appreciation of where we are in the whole scheme of things, in uh, the world's order, if you like, or the universal order of things. And we come back to the fact that in balance, this is a, it is perhaps something that can be expected. You can, in your old age, expect a decline. You can expect perhaps some illnesses, hopefully no uh, serious diseases, but it does happen. So how do we look at it in context is obviously to give thanks. And that was my big lesson last year when I looked at that situation with my mother and her experience of a stroke, losing language, losing the ability to communicate. Another example, a friend of mine who had a really bad run last year, she did a serious investment of a financial investment and lost a lot of money. We discussed it together and looked at it in from a from a philosophical slash spiritual perspective, how to put it again in context. And then interestingly, not nine months later, she was a hard, very, very hard worker professional. She's in the financial field. And she uh, then found herself being awarded all these contracts. A wonderful, amazing financial windfall came upon her and fell in her lap. And the craziness of the ups and downs financially is, uh, is just one example. And how she bounced back through this just putting her head down, working hard, and as I said, head down into what she knows best, what she loves doing, what she's good at. And things then change. Things uh, for your fortune can change from month to month, from week to week, and sometimes from year to year. So again, uh, the, how do we put it in context? Uh, we just focus on what is important in your life. You give the gratitudes, you continue to practice in your whatever spiritual tradition you have, you fall back on your rituals and your practices and your habits uh, that give you that solidity and that grounding. And this is what I know this uh, particular friend did. So she had the lows, she's going to have the highs, but then she might well go back down to the lows. So I wanted to share a couple of those stories with you and invite you to think about this mantra in the context of us understanding there are going to be the good and the bad times and don't be shocked when there are struggles and obstacles and challenges in your path. So uh, we have a tendency towards overreacting. We we know this from our addiction to social media and our uh, everything today seems to be blown up into extremes. Whether you see that on the news, whether you see it uh, with friends sharing news that we could probably downplay, but we tend to overreact to some of the big and smaller things that happen in our lives. I wanted to share though and the affirmation. If there was an affirmation that I culled from this mantra, it would be this. I accept the transient nature of of pleasure and pain. I focus on what I can control and I maintain inner peace in the face of any external change. So this is the idea that we just, again, I, I'm probably overusing the word, but equanimity. How can you find that nice balance between the extremes, between the high, the low, the dark, the light, the celestial, terrestrial, you know, heavenly, uh, and the earthly, uh, everything in between. Can we find that balance? So that's our challenge. And this mantra asks us, invites us to contemplate where we're at on this journey. So I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope that you will use this mantra in your chanting practice. So again, if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. And I love to have comments. So if you have any questions, please put them in uh, the space below. And uh, I look forward to continue this discussion. See you in the next video. Bye for now.